Have you watched this Kurzgesagt video and seen this? The smallest place. The scale here is the Planck length, which is the distance light travels in a Planck time. None of our models of the universe make sense at scales smaller than this, so for now, this is it. And wondered why and how and what even is the Planck length? Well, there's not only a Planck length, but also a whole system of Planck units which many people think are the most extreme units pushing our understanding of the universe to its limits. And today, I'll be covering them. Max Planck proposed these units in his paper Über Irreversible Strahlungsvorgänge, or About Irreversible Radiation Processes, in which he proposed four main units, only using fundamental physical constants to create these units. With these four main constants, Planck proposed a length, mass, time, and temperature, today called the Planck units. His goal was to make units which are not biased off of anything we humans use and create units which any other intelligent extraterrestrial life could invent or discover, assuming these fundamental constants of the universe don't change. The four constants chosen were the gravitational constant representing gravity and general relativity, the Planck's constant for quantum mechanics, the speed of light because it's the speed limit of the universe, the fastest at which anything can travel, and the Boltzmann constant just for temperature. These three constants have units, and we need to somehow mix these units together to get values like length, time, or mass. So, how do we do that? The process of looking at these units and figuring out ways to configure these to get a certain unit as an output is called dimensional analysis. I won't cover it though, because it's boring. So, why is the Planck length the smallest distance? Well, there are two main theories that we have right now describing the universe that is, general relativity explaining gravity, and the standard model describing subatomic particles and their interactions, which builds up to explaining pretty much almost everything else. The thing is, the standard model is made to explain things on the quantum realm, and general relativity was made to deal with huge objects whose gravities are actually significant, like planets and stars. But we don't have a theory of quantum gravity, because, as far as we know, there's no such thing as a graviton, for example, which wouldn't be such a problem, yet it is, because if we talk about tiny distances, gravity becomes stronger and stronger the closer objects get together. And this becomes very significant at the Planck length. You don't even need to understand any complex equation, just look at this simple equation probably all of you watching understand and were taught in school, that is Newton's law of gravitation. Also quickly just want to say that this equation is kind of correct, in the way that the idea is correct. Obviously today we know gravity is a result of the curvature of space-time and not an attractive force like Newton thought, but this equation still shows the thingamajig pretty well. You see, what it says is that the force of attraction in Newtons between two objects is equal to their masses over their distance from each other squared. And this says that gravity gets exponentially weaker as the two objects get away from each other. In the other way though, the force gets much stronger as the objects come together. Now the closer and closer the two objects get together, the stronger the force gets, which makes sense but it completely breaks down at quantum sizes, because all of our theories of gravity are made for large objects like planets and so on. So our theories at the Planck scale completely break down and space-time starts to turn into a fluctuating foam at the scale where quantum effects dominate, such as uncertainty and probability. The basic idea of quantum foam is, we don't know a theory of quantum gravity, but what suggests that space-time has to be smooth? It predicts that at the quantum scale, space-time is an ever-changing foam impossible to be smooth because of uncertainty. Now, the Planck time is very simple now that you understand the Planck length. Planck time is the time it takes for light to travel one Planck length. Yeah, it's really as simple as that. And now for the Planck temperature. The Planck temperature is thought to be the hottest anything can get, because at that temperature, the light of the black body radiation getting emitted would have a wavelength equal to the Planck length. If we assume the Planck length is the smallest possible length, then anything with a higher temperature would have light with a shorter wavelength, which wouldn't be possible. So this is it. And this is how all of these main Planck units are kind of related to each other. Like for example, we can turn the Planck temperature into joules via the Boltzmann constant then turn it into mass via e equals mc squared, which would be equal to the Planck mass. The Planck time multiplied by the speed of light is the Planck length, and the other way around. And if you were to be moving one Planck length per Planck time, you'd be moving at the speed of light. 
Through things like that, all of these are connected, and based off of these two units, the plank length and time, you can also get other units, like for example, area, volume, and acceleration. These two are just the plank length squared slash cubed, and lastly, this is the fastest possible acceleration, because you would accelerate to the speed of light in one plank time. These are the values for all of this. From this, we can also get a huge amount of energy in newtons by forces equal to mass times acceleration. Plug in Planck mass and Planck acceleration, and then you get the Planck force, which would be similar to the energy released by a supernova, or about the lifetime energy output of the sun. This has the value this. Or explained in Planck units, the Planck force is the attraction two objects of one Planck mass each would feel if they were one Planck length apart represented mathematically, like this. There are also a bunch of other Planck units, pretty much Planck units for everything, but they're not really anything special. For example, the Planck charge is about 11.7 elementary charges. Tiny charge, but it's not like it's the smallest charge possible or something. Or the Planck resistance, which is about 30 ohms, which really is not anything significant. So, Planck units really aren't any units to describe the maximums or minimums of the universe. They were just made to have units which aren't based off of any human bias, and just units purely based off of physical constants. It really just is a coincidence that the Planck length and time are significant for us currently.